Hi, my name is Dennis Belitsky from Leonardo AI, and today I have the pleasure to be on a call with Max, also known as Azathen. And Max is going to be teaching you some very cool stuff from his personal account. We are going to be talking about cross-modeling. He's going to teach you some of the most interesting principles he applies to get similar results to upscaling without having to upscale the images. And also we're going to be talking about different styles, composition, Art Deco, Art Nouveau, and several things more. So there's a lot of stuff coming. And hey, uh, uh, Max, can you hear me? Uh, I can, yeah, Dennis. Uh, it's, it's nice to talk to you today. Nice to be on this call with you, buddy. This is amazing. Can you please show some of your creations? Uh, absolutely, yep. Um, uh, I should be displaying now. Um, yes, I can see your screen, yeah. Excellent, fantastic. Um, I do a lot of everything. I try out um, a whole bunch of different styles um, of, of portraits, of action, of monsters. I, I, I do a little bit of everything that you can do with this tool, and I've still only barely scratched the surface. In fact, I remember you said before this call that you started doing uh, burgers, and then you got to all create all sort of crazy stuff. Did you? Absolutely. Yep. Um, so when I when I started out, uh, when I got to Leo, I hadn't done any um, AI image generation before this, so I was really learning how to do stuff on the fly. Um, so I saw some prompts on the site, I plugged them in, I tried them out, I switched them up a little bit. I started out with you know very simple, just very simple hamburgers, you know, trying to trying to make something that looked good. And uh, slowly that morphed into learning how prompts work and learning how um, to phrase uh, uh, different, uh, uh, to get different results uh, that you might want. Um, and as it turns out, that went into monsters. Boy, I designed a whole bunch of monsters. Because the great thing about them is, it doesn't matter how off they look, how many extra arms they have, everything's gravy with monsters. <laughs> um, but since then, I moved on to um, you know trying to find out the best uh, way to um, interact with Leo, um, to to phrase prompts, um, the, the core components of it, and how to get the best results that I can. Okay, so show us a couple of examples. I mean, I'm I'm looking at your images. They are amazing, very interesting compositions, and the colors are super. Um, they are different to everything I've 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 seen, to be honest. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I, I tend to do a lot of um, uh, varying in my styles, but I, I tend to stick to things with like an Art Deco or Art Nouveau kind of style, um, because Leo seems to have a good time with knowing um, uh, what those hard lines and what those hard styles um, are. Um, so for example, I've got, uh, let me just pull up some Nouveau, why not? Um, so uh, yeah, uh, really tapping into um, that that curving architecture, um, that uh, uh, the the ornate stylings um, of these kind of things. Um, and uh, what's more, I like to keep my prompts as simple as I possibly can. So can you explain some of the things you use um, in terms of terms? Um, or, or in terms of uh, the the tools of, of Leo. No, no. I mean, I mean, let let's let's start with the with the terms you use, so we actually go can go to the to the most interesting stuff once we cover the basics. Absolutely. Um, like I said, I like to keep my my prompts as simple as, as lean as I possibly can, um, but <clears throat> but getting the most value for my book. Um, so uh, I love Epic. Epic as a phrase is fantastic because it tells Leo, whatever you're going to do, crank that up to 11. Maybe it's going to look great. Um, uh, glamour shots uh, tell Leo to vary up um, the, uh, the view from um, attempt to attempt, not to just maintain, say, a wide shot or a close shot. Um, throwing in an aesthetic really uh, spices up um, and really directs uh, the, the AI into developing um, what something looks like in a particular way. Um, uh, I nail down my subject, try to do that as succinctly as possible, and then throw in some modifiers like uh, uh, the 
quality, the, the lens style gives a more um, realistic uh, image. Um, uh, specifying how sharp I want through 8K, uh, the lighting, volumetric lighting. Um, and if, if you can uh, successfully um, crunch down all of those terms uh, into a tight package, uh, you're really going to generate quality images every time. So, so it all starts with the composition. I noticed that uh, all of your images have some a character looking at something or with a certain expression in their face, right? Sure. Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, it's it's important in, in your variance to throw in, um, say, a, a mood or a tone. Um, you can make your images uh, scary or dreamy or happy. Um, just throwing in some kind of... Um, uh, a qualifier in that way uh, can spruce up your images. Uh, this queen is grim. She's horror. I evoke some Lovecraft in there. And it has a very different feel to uh, something like uh, this, this dreamy queen who, who loves her vegetables, I guess. Um, but uh, throwing in things like Masterpiece ends up um, uh, pulling uh, your composition together. Um, and throwing in terms like Vibrant or uh, Highly Detailed uh, will spice up your color. OK, so, so once you have this, or once, I guess once you have the basic idea, today I want to make a queen and use it uh, with, with a certain expression on her face, what's next? Uh, really just plug it into the simplest prop you can and uh, give it a go. Uh, Leo is remarkably talented insofar as if you give it uh, just the basic principles, <clears throat> it can generate some immensely varied and, and uh, uh, quality results. Um, I, can, uh, I can generate something for you right now if, you, if you'd like. That would be cool. Let's do it. Yeah, great. Um, I have uh, this old prompt that I've been working on. Where we got? Um, it's a it's a villain. She's cause and terror. Um, so I typically like to start my process in Dream Shaper. I find that it's got uh, the best poses, uh, uh, the best scenes, the best compositions. While it may have these, it's not always the best in making the best looking people or the highest uh, level of detail, say. Um, so while I generate images, uh, it's not the last step in my process. Uh, so begin by giving a base image. This may or may not turn out to be um, uh, of the quality that I would like. Um, but what we can do is use uh, a technique that we refer to as cross-modeling, uh, mm -hmm. by which we pass an image generated in one model through a different model um, to really refine the details um, and expound upon them based on a model's particular strengths. OK, so th there's a couple of details I already see. Um, can you explain very quickly the prompt you use? It's dreamy. Absolutely. Um, I throw in chempunk, which makes things a little complicated. Uh, movement makes people move around. Um, glamour shot, I think I mentioned before. Um, mm -hmm. Ornate, I think I might have intricate in here. Um, they throw in uh, a bunch of detail. Um, but apparently that's a little too much. And this lady, while she looks very cool and very badass, little too much going on. Um, it's a busy image, is it? It, it? A remarkably busy image, but it's got a lot of, it's got good bones. So what we can do is run this image through our image image and change the model that we're running with. Um, Deliberate ends up um, trimming out a lot of those details, and it also shores up um, the, the features of at least uh, humanoid type um, uh, uh, figures. Um, and what it'll do Without much uh, extra prompting, you see I, I just ran that with the same prompt that I had, mm -hmm. um, it will clean up and improve uh, the image immensely without having to run it through uh, your upscaler. And now that you have this much cleaner image, the upscale is going to be that much better. Wow. Can you, can you scroll down a little bit so we compare both of the images? Sure. Uh, you got the one that you started with? 
busy, yeah. got a lot of stuff going on, but again, good bones. Um, and then we swap to this one, um, so much cleaner. Um, it's got a lot of those details and the same uh, sort of pose and scene, but mm -hmm. it looks so much better. So, so let's go through this. So you started with Dream Shaper mm -hmm. and you used this basic prompt you had, right? Which included all of these details. Yep. And then you used it as image to image. And what was the initial strength? Um, I, I cranked it up to 10 for both of them. I, I wanted, uh, or sorry, the guidance I set at 10, which is a little higher than you might want, but I wanted my details. And I just set the init strength to, to 0.3 where it starts out at. Why do you do that? Uh, because it works. Um, you can, you can add, crank it up to five a little bit, um, but then you start getting a few more of those details, um, uh, more of the uh, initial image. But where it sits uh, at, at default, at 0.3, you, you get good results. So if you set it to 0 0.5, usually you get more details and it gets busier and busier. That's what you mean? Correct. Yep. And do you usually start with Dream Shaper and just switch? Or how does it usually work? Um, I, I am a, an avid Dream Shaper fan. Um, I, I swear by the results. Um, it's got the best posing. It's the great place to start. Um, but if I'm looking to make um, a more, say, photorealistic image, I'll cross model that into RPG. Or if I'm just trying to declutter an image, I'll throw that through deliberate. And then if you're feeling particularly spicy, you can uh, cross model the result of that again through, say, uh, Leonardo Diffusion and get a lot of that hard detail and hard edge into it. That's very interesting. Can you show us some examples from your own images and maybe tell us, you know, uh, tell us the story. How did it go and what you were looking for? Uh, absolutely, of course. Uh, yes. Uh, what would be a good thing to show you? Uh, um, uh, I can tell you, basically everything that I do runs through this process. Um, uh, uh, Deco, try something here. Um, for example, uh, I can start off uh, with this guy. It's got sort of soft features. Uh, with your big combat scenes, um, you're not going to get the details that you want right out of the gate because there's a lot of stuff going on. There's only so much noise to interpret. Um, but if you run that through deliberate, all the edges seem to harden. The, the, the facial features come into play. Um, and what's more, you can run that through a second time through your cross model and even refine those edges even further. Hmm. So you, you're getting similar results as if you were upscaling the images, only that you're not. Uh, correct. And what's more, once you've done this cross modeling, you can upscale and get those those fine refined details uh, that you would get, but better. So th these are crazy compositions. How, like, how did you come up with this? <laughs> I'm very, I'm very interested in that. Uh, again, uh, I let Leo do most of the work. I give it some indication of what it might do. A lone hero shoots lightning, which uh, Leo kind of does. There's a guy shooting, there's some lightning in it. Um, but uh, the, the tool is immensely powerful. And if you give it enough room to run, it's, it's gonna run and it's gonna get you some cool stuff. What would happen if, for example, you tried a different model with the same prompt, let's say, you know, there's so many models that we have. Mm -hmm. Have you tried that? Of course, of course. Um, let me run uh, the same prompt that we just ran through, say, RPG. Um, the result is going to be all right. Um, and certainly it's, it's going to be um, uh, using the strengths of the model that we generate with. Um, but just like before, we can take whatever output this is, run it through a different model, and uh, improve it tremendously. There, there are no wasted images on Leo. Uh, as you can see, it delivers a much more photorealistic person. Um, it's still busy. Um, the results are there, and you can always improve them.
So you would do the same thing again, right? Just absolutely. Um, do just a just a little mini up res, um, passing it through uh, deliberate. I'll set this back down to 0.3, um, and simple as that. If you're not if you're not trying out uh, the image to image tool, if you're sleeping on it, don't sleep on it. It is perhaps the strongest tool uh, in your arsenal. What were the most interesting and at the same time strange results you, you, you ever gotten by doing this? I would say, what were the happy accidents? Perfect. Stuff like that. I got something for you. Um, um, before we do, just a quick stop in. All these, all these details cleaned up. You got a, uh, what turns into a beautiful mask for this woman. Uh, it, cross modeling cannot be understated. Um, but as for happy accidents, uh, uh, I was uh, uh, designing uh, some more villains. I love villains. They're so uh, uh, iconic and simple, and they don't get enough screen time. Um, uh, nope, that's not how you spell chaos. Um, I was uh, I was generating some some images. Um, I had I had this woman. She ended up being too cluttered, too much, too 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 much. Um, but then um, passing it through uh, the cross model ends up being something completely different, completely new, and completely improved. Um, I also stumbled upon uh, when I was doing some uh, different stylings. Um, uh, 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 monochrome and the, the power that it can have uh, in your prompts. Um, I was trying to make something monochrome and then I accidentally threw a color in there. And then wouldn't you know it, uh, it makes something monochrome but pops out that one color that you want. Um, so it can really emphasize different parts of a scene and uh, turn it into something that it, it absolutely wouldn't have been before. How did you make this happen? This is P so nice. Pure accident. Um, I, I, being clean and proficient and perfect with your prompting, uh, don't worry about it. Um, you're going to find so many little happy accidents, um, just by trying out different terms and different features uh, of the tool. So was it, was it just that keyword purple monochrome or something else? Yep. I, I was just playing around with monochrome. Um, and then I, I was dealing with something I can't remember at the moment, um, but it, it had a color term in it. Um, and then it, it just, uh, it just, it just happened. Um, you ended up, I ended up with, uh, some, something tinted, uh, like this. Um, but then in further iterations, um, it kept everything, uh, Pleasantville style all in one color, except for the one that popped. It's, yep. It seems very similar to the previous prompt. So you you are more like um, you are don't play with prompts so much. You actually add one keyword and then play with with the models, right? Absolutely. I am not what you would consider a prompt wizard, a prompt master. Um, I find something that works and I play around with it, making small changes um, where possible. Um, and that's another really important part. You don't. You don't have to be really good at prompting to make tremendous art. Um, you can say, look at some of the prompts that are on the community feed and tweak them uh, to your uh, particular interests or particular styles um, and reduce them in such a way that you get some cool art about, out of it. But uh, the, Leonardo is a, an immensely powerful tool. Uh, I can't stress that enough. Um, and this isn't even touching um, the different artists that it knows and being able to merge those styles into play. Um, just being able to make minor tweaks to prompts is going to deliver you uh, uh, quality art. So let's, can you scroll through this monochrome section and, and show us a little bit more examples? I see you've been playing with red, with green. Uh, that fire is, is, looks so well. I mean, that, that's... That's so interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, in in this uh, in these prompts, I ended up playing mostly with uh, a little bit of chem punk, but mostly Art Deco. Um, I uh, I think I mentioned I, I play a lot with Art Deco and Art Nouveau. Um, they deliver good results, 
Um, uh, let's see if I can. Uh, I, uh, yep, we we have orange over here with this firefighter. We've got this this angry businessman floating in red, um, and and just those those single additions of color um, really change the mood and affect the the, the feeling of the piece. Uh, and and it is the simplest change of changing the subject and mm -hmm. varying the color that you're trying to pull off. And you obviously, uh, v you know, try to make sure that you match the color with the composition because in this case it's a, it's a it's a prisoner sitting against the wall of the cell. So you chose blue instead of yellow, for example. Sure. Um, and and that's that's purely stylistic. Like uh, uh, red doesn't you know necessarily pop with adventure, maybe, um, but it it makes uh, it, it's a great contrast to. Um, the, this character um, maybe it uh, inspires determination or something, but uh, again, purely stylistic. Um, and uh, just to uh, uh, to the credit of the tool of being able to pull off uh, this kind of art. Uh, uh, yep, uh, but. Uh, there's more than just playing with color. You can play with um, style. You can play with subject. Um, you can make uh, immense battle scenes. You can make uh, portraits of, of uh, queens with asparagus. You know, um, and and again, like I mentioned, keeping your prompts simple can deliver you fantastic results. What about negative prompts? Is it always the same, or do you add certain certain things in there? Uh, it, it varies uh, f very little, uh, frankly. Um, in uh, it, it depends on if I'm trying to uh, get a particular um, subject or view. Like sometimes um, uh, I, I want a, a more grand scene, so maybe I'll um, add centered into it to prevent you know one one um, character from taking view, or sometimes I don't want Leo to, um, dip into black and white, or sometimes I do. So throwing in uh, black and white or color into the negative prompt can really help. Um, mm -hmm. but by and large, you can stick with the same negative prompt too. Um, yep. Uh, there's some things that you can really benefit from adding in, in any negative prompt, things like symbol, watermark, logo, because sometimes those get pulled in. Um, but uh, a powerful negative prompt is also a powerful tool. Now, I, I, I remember that uh, I saw a couple of examples of you experimenting with, with mood changes. So for example, you would take a queen and then make this queen in a totally different style just by changing a couple of things. How do you do it? Um, as simple as that. Uh, just, just by uh, asking for um, a different style from Leo. Um, I will find this queen. So for example, I have this queen, or, or this, I, I guess, aristocrat. Mm -hmm. um, uh, she uh, She's posing in a particular way. It's very happy. It's very, um, uh, 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 it's got a nice uh, happy mood to it. Um, but uh, we've got new tools that are rolling out, the, the, uh, the control net uh, options. Um, and with that, uh, you can, uh, change the the mood um, and the tone uh, significantly um, uh, without really putting in too much work. Um, uh, right, uh, that same image when used as an image to image uh, with the very basic of prompt can turn that um, that aristocrat into some kind of evil sorceress. Um, uh, with dark, heavy uh, uh, lighting and mood, uh, and it doesn't take it. It doesn't take much. A, a very simple prompt change. Um, How did you do it, man? Can, can you show a, an example with some image? Uh, sure. Yep. Um, uh, we have uh, uh, this nice Art Nouveau queen. Um, she loves her vegetables. Uh, it, it's it's a good design. It's clean. It's a very mm -hmm. particular pose. Um, um, 
but we pass it through the control net tools. Uh, we can change her into a demonic queen, um, or we can change her into a, a futuristic uh, uh, woman. Um, and, and like you can see, very simple prompt change. Okay. Um, can, can, can we try doing it right now, just to see the results live? Sure, of course. Um, how would you like to uh, how would you like to change this queen? I I, I don't know some, something something evil. <laughs> evil, perfect. Yeah. Um, so because she she looks so happy, so let's do mm -hmm. something evil. Uh, so we'll uh, we'll use these depth to image tools. Um, we'll uh, we'll crank up these uh, uh, st the strength uh, something high. We Very won't even high. use we won't even use a negative prompt. We'll just say uh, uh, an uh, evil uh, villain uh, crackling with energy. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, let the tool do its work. Um, the the control net tools are, uh, as of this recording, still pretty new, but Super uh, new. Yep. we don't, we can't even grasp the full power of them yet. Uh, they are, uh, they're going to be a real game changer for sure. Um, and I can't wait. Uh, running so many tests at the moment, uh, just trying to figure out the best way to, uh, to configure and, and use these new tools at our disposal. Why did you pick such a, such a strong initial strength? Um, it, it seems as though, again, initial testing, um, the higher you uh, use the init strength, at least for depth to image, um, the more uh, ornate, the more details that you can get out of it. Um, and there we go. Interesting. Such an interesting result. And again, the prompt was an evil villain cracking with energy. That's it. Simple. Simple, very simple. Yep. Uh, the, the one thing that I would push to, to all people looking to try out AI tools, the barrier to entry, very low. You get on the platform, all the prompts are, are, are there for you to look at and experiment and play around with. Um, and you don't have to be a master prompt builder to create something beautiful or scary. Which, which, are, which are your, uh, your personal favorites from your feed? Which I think just uh, like you're super proud of. Uh, sure. Uh, I've got a few. Um, there, it's hard to pick between uh, so many. Boy, I've generated so many images on this platform. Um, but I've got a couple of corgis that have really knocked it out of the park with. Uh, you got these battle corgis in a world where corgi centaurs exist. They love war, I guess. Um, <laughs> Uh, you've got uh, so, some uh, some nice happy corgis floating on some balloons uh, in the clouds. Man, that's suspended guy's in the time. air. That's cool. Uh, that's that's very that's very interesting. How did you come up with an idea of of a corgi suspended in the air? I don't know. Corgis, uh, you've, you've seen all those gifts of, of corgis like pretending to swim when you hold them over water. I figured probably could do that in the air too. Um, uh, and then uh, uh, Rose, uh, I've got like, this great image, a uh, bunch of images of, of these, these uh, beautiful women with roses. However, um, some real product photography of, of uh, gilded rose. Um, and it really captures, it, it looks like it could be a real photo. Uh, it, it's incredible, the power of the tool. And it's such a simple prompt you used in there, a gilded rose called ultra detailed. I sound like a broken record, but if you keep it simple, Leo will provide. Hmm. And so have you tried adding more words to the prompt? And what was the result? Uh, I have. And you know what? The, the results are good. Let's be clear. You can get some uh, high quality uh, images out of Leo with dense prompts. However, there are limits to um, uh, the the amount that Leo can process. It's only going to uh, take in so many um, uh, keywords before it starts uh, picking and choosing at its discretion uh, what it would like to uh, display for you. Um, the, the shorter you pick your prompt, the more likely you're going to get exactly what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you're adding way too many keywords and 
it, there's there's a limit to everything, right? It's mm -hmm. it becomes way too uh, complex and saturated, I guess, right? Correct. Um, so, for example, I can get a great quality image with this essay of a prompt, right? But by and large, Leo's probably ignoring most of the stuff that's here. Um, and it just so happens that many of the bits that it pulls in all look good together. So you're saying you could have probably gotten to a similar result with less prompts and have more control over it? Absolutely true. That, that uh, my opinion, in my experience, that's what I would say. Um, I could probably tear this prompt uh, in half at least and get something of comparable quality. Um, or could just start with a really simple prompt and get some good stuff. I don't know, maybe, maybe that's just me. Interesting. Now, I, I guess, you know, when you, when you do so many images, not everything is perfect. Have you had any, you know, examples that it, it just didn't go the way you, you were expecting? Uh, well, for example, this, this armor dude with teeth didn't see that one coming. Um, uh, but absolutely, yes. Uh, I, I run into strange generations basically every day, every time I use the tool. But like I said, there's no, there's no image that's lost. Um, with with the power of cross modeling, you can always recover something um, that initially might not be up to what you expect it to. Do you, do you have any examples of images that that was exactly what happened? Uh, it comes to I mean, you have so many in there, and it's crazy compositions. Boy, um, yeah, I think I, I think I've deleted it at this point, but um, I tell you. Pandas usually don't have two heads, not on their belly. Um, hmm. But uh, I was able to um, to uh, image to image this into uh, a different. Uh, it's it's not here at the moment. Um, I think uh, uh, no, it's uh, it's far gone. But but suffice to say, um, you can you can use these tools uh, to immense power. Got it, man. Okay, well, th th this is some insane art I see here. Um, so we talked about cross modeling. We talked about simple prompts versus complex prompts. Uh, we talked about some of the crazy ideas you use, uh, and obviously you gave us, you know, a couple of examples about everything you do. Do you have any, you know, if if you if you could give one advice and the most important advice when it comes to generating images with Leo, what what would that be? Experiment. Try out new things. Um, uh, doing uh, the same prompt over and over will get you great results. Um, but you're not going to grow and you're not going to learn about uh, what's possible with the tool uh, if you don't try out new things. Um, so go look at other people's prompts. Go uh, look at other things, movies, books, whatever. Be inspired by um, different media um, and pull that into the images that you create. That's a wonderful advice. Thank you, man. Well, uh, I guess we, we, we saw many, many things from, uh, from, from your generations. It's amazing. Thank you so much for being on this call. This, is, will, this will be published uh, to, to the community. So yeah, hopefully a lot of people will be inspired by your work. And, and, and yeah, I guess we will have more and more interesting examples of your work coming in the, in the next uh, weeks and months. So this is not the, uh, hopefully not the, the, the last time we meet together. Oh, absolutely not. No, I've got, I've got plenty in store. I've got some, some interesting things up my sleeve soon. Um, but thank you for having me. It was, it's been a pleasure.